hey, how are you? We missed you here today as we stayed at home during this time of crisis and mandatory personal distancing. And for those of us who have teenagers, mandatory personal distancing is something that we really have a lot of experience with. Well, this is an odd time for all of us, and a lot of us uh, are having a time of suffering. Fear of the unknown and uh, dread of what could transpire surrounds the spirit of this age, and people are panicking and buying everything off the shelves, and it's kind of crazy. Now, our Bible passage today talks about suffering, so let's look into it right now. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know, it's times like this that people show their true character. And sometimes people get a little agitated as... Uh, they tend to behave a little less ideal when the stresses of life and the situations that they're in become overwhelming, and they can lash out at others. Paul says suffering produces perseverance. Now, the word suffering here in the original Greek is the lispian, which means distress, and its base meaning really means from under pressure. Now, the stresses of this world produce Perseverance, because we really encounter a lot of odd behavior. And everyone is under a lot of pressure. This time is really uh, mixing it up for us. And how we respond to changes, and how we respond to pressure, really change us. Now the word perseverance in this passage translates from the Greek, hamoni, uh, which means endurance, steadfastness, with a cheerful demeanor, which is really hard to do. But how you act changes you. It builds pathways of behavior that you find easier to run to, pathways that sometimes might not be the best for you either. But the good news is that it's the same true for the positive things in your life. They build pathways too. You build patterns of positive, positive behavior that will have a positive effect on your life. You build patterns of behavior. You build character. So if you have to be out, and if the lines are long in the store, or you wait all day for something that you really need, only to find out you can't get it, well, don't get discouraged. These are weird times. And times, if there's one thing we always learn, times change. So humans are always the same. And humans can always change. And lastly, Paul tells us that character builds hope. Because we've seen God at work in the world and in our hearts. So we've seen God work mightily. And if you have faith, you know God will work things out. So if worse comes to worst and you're stuck in a hospital, just have hope. Because it doesn't mean the end. It just means another little journey. People are getting sick all the time, but enduring it. And even though this is a pandemic, not everybody passes away. People might get sicker. People might get even less sicker. But just let's not worry. Let's not put everything ahead of the horse. And let's just put that cart where it belongs. And let's lead our lives as we should, with kindness and with love. And if you end up in the hospital, well, just take it easy. There was a woman in Mount Sinai Hospital, and uh, she uh, called up and she said, Mount Sinai Hospital, and she said, hello, darling, I'd like to speak to the person in charge of information about patients. I don't know if the patient is doing better or good or expected, uh, uh, but I just want some information from the top to bottom for this person. And the person on the other line at the hospital said, well, would you please hold the line? That's a very unusual request. And it was a very authoritative voice that came on next and said, uh, are you the lady calling about the patients? And she said, yes, yes, darling. I, I, I just want to know some information about Sarah Finkel in room 302. And he said, Finkel, Finkel, Finkel. Let me
me see. Barber Feinberg. Oh, Finkel, yes. Mrs. Finkel is doing very well. In fact, uh, she's having two full meals. Her doctor will come and see if she's better. And if she is, then he plans on sending her home on Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Well, the woman was, well, thank God. That's wonderful. She's going to be at home at 12 o'clock. I'm so happy to hear that. That's just wonderful news. Well, the guy on the other end says, well, from your enthusiasm, I take it that she must be a close family member. And she said, well, close family member, sure. Well, I'm actually Sarah Finkel, and the doctor won't tell me anything. So hang on. Things will get better. And we'll see you soon in a couple weeks. God bless. And here are some information tidbits for you uh, for the week ahead. Bye-bye. pray. Father God, I ask you to touch everybody who is at home during this time of crisis. I pray you would keep them safe, keep them healthy, help them to get the things that they need to continue on through their daily life. Just calm any hearts that are in stress, calm any hearts that are getting sick, help everybody to feel better and to be able to come back to this uh, time of sanctuary and hope uh, in a couple of weeks as we go through this coronavirus uh, lockdown. We ask you to protect everybody and bring them safely back in Jesus' name.